Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video on the properties of integrals. Last time we went through all six of these properties and how they might make a little bit of sense. Uh, this time we're going to do some example problems and uh, how these properties might get used in, in those contexts. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. Um, first off, I'll just say these comparison properties, I'll mention those at the end if we have some time, but I do want to get to some of these first. Uh, so we have here a list of integrals. So suppose we have the integral of f from 0 to 4 is equal to 5. Uh, Integral of f from 0 to 2 is negative 3. Uh, notice the different function here. Integral of g, 0 to 4 is negative 1, and g from 0 to 2 is 2. Uh, so those are functions we know the integrals of on those specific bounds. We don't really know much more about the functions than that. Uh, so the first one here, find uh, this integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx. And I'll just start this one by saying uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you a way that really helps when there's, say, three or four of these uh, to just think about the bounds and how you travel uh, for the bounds. So uh, let's go ahead and try that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is come over here and look at the integral we want, which is starting at 2 and going over to 4. Uh, so this is our kind of starting place, and this is our ending place right here. And go ahead and grab a different color for some of the other movements. Maybe try that. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is start at two and try to get to four, but only using these integrals up here. So we can only use these guys right here. Uh, well, if I start at 2, I can go to 0. I might have to switch some bounds later on, uh, things like that. But uh, starting at 2, I know I can get to 0 using that guy. So we'll go this way. And then hopefully there's something else that can take me back to 4. And in this case, you know, if it's a good problem, there should be. Uh, so we can get back to 4 by going from 0 to 4. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go 0 to 4 right there. And that kind of makes my path from 2 to 0, then 0 to 4 uh, for this integral right here. Uh, now if we go ahead and write down what that means over here, then we're taking this integral. Um, we're going to start at 2 and go to 0. And then since this is all f's, I'm not going to write f of x dx each time, but um, should have f of x in there. So 2 to 0 and then 0 to 4, for those guys. And as long as you have those integrals, you're good. Uh, this one, though, 0 to 2 we have, but we don't have 2 to 0. So we do need to switch those bounds. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and write out uh, this as negative. Looked at this property 2 last time. Negative integral from 0 to 2. I'm switching those bounds, and then plus this integral from uh, 0 to 4. All right, so there's 0 to 4. And we'll go ahead and put in our value. So this integral from 0 to 2, that's negative 3. So we get negative times negative 3. And then plus integral 0 to 4 is 5, so plus 5. And that should be a positive 3 plus 5, so that is 8. Uh, so that's it. So as you're doing those, um, that's kind of the idea is that you're just going to be looking at uh, trying to make a chain from the lower bound to the upper bound, uh, see what you get. Like I said, there's other ways you could do this. This is the integral from 0 to 4 minus 0 to 2. Uh, you could think about that for this context. It's not too hard. Uh, but as you start adding more and more, like this number 2 will do at the bottom, uh, if you get three or four of these, uh, this kind of using the chain going from one point to the next to the next uh, does tend to make it a little easier, at least for me. All right, let's go ahead and try this one. This one's a little bit different. So here we're just going to use some of those properties. Uh, like if I'm subtracting two things, I can split up the integral. Uh, so we're going to say this is uh, so integral zero to four of five times f of x. 
Uh, there should be a little dx right there. And then minus this integral 0 to 4 of 3g of x dx. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is take out these constants. So uh, if I go ahead and take out the constants, then this is what we're going to get. So now we have this 5 times integral 0 to 4 of f of x dx minus 3 integral 0 to 4 of g of x dx. So pulling those constants out of the integral. Remember, that was another one of our properties, I think, number 5. Uh, so we go ahead and do that. And now what we're left with are these integrals right here. And we should be able to, for that integral and that integral, just replace those with these numbers up here. So integral 0 to 4 of f, we're going to replace that with a 5. Uh, for g, integral 0 to 4 is negative 1. So go and replace those values. Oh, here we get uh, that 5 times... And replacing that integral, 5, uh, minus 3 times, and then replacing that integral with the negative 1. Uh, negative 3 times negative 1 will be a plus 3, so we get 25 plus 3 is 28. So that is our final answer. All right. Uh, so that is the kind where you're just basically plugging values in, using the properties to rearrange, and then plugging in those integral values uh, for that one. All right, last one here. Uh, let's go ahead and try this guy down here. All right, so if we have this integral from negative 1 to 3 of g of x is 11, integral negative 1 to 8 is 5, and 8 to 2 is 4, find this integral of g of x from 2 to 3. Uh, so this is what I was talking about before. If I have more than two integrals, sometimes trying to look at these bounds can get a little weird. Uh, but we're just going to try to follow a chain of what we have from 2 until we get to 3. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw that out, see what that looks like. I'm going to start at 2. And I might have to zoom this out a little bit. So let's go and zoom that out so I get in there. Um, there we go, I think. And we'll also need negative 1, uh, which is about right here-ish. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm going to start with 2, try to get to 3. So I scan my list of integrals. Uh, the only thing that has a 2 is right here, uh, that 2 to 8. So let's go, and go ahead and start uh, at 2, and we'll go all the way over to 8. Uh, we look for an 8, and it looks like I do have one here, uh, so I can go from 8 to negative 1. So at 8, I can go all the way back to negative 1, somewhere over here. So let's say that is my negative 1, and then we're going to go ahead and go, uh, the last thing looks like I have a negative 1 and a 3, so we're going to go from negative 1 to 3, right there. Uh, so that's taking me from 2, kind of a roundabout way. I have to go over, then back to the left, then back to the right, but it does take me from 2 and end me at 3. Uh, so now let's just go ahead and write out what those integrals were, and then maybe switch some bounds and then plug in some values. So, I'm going to start here with uh, this integral. Uh, we went from 2 to 8. So that was our first one. And again, since all these are g of x, I'm not going to uh, write those. Um, just because my pen is having trouble here. Uh, next we go from 8 to negative 1. So from 8 to negative 1. And then we go from negative 1 to 3 for the last. So negative 1 to 3. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter if these are in numerical order, um, you know, like the 8 to negative 1 is going backwards, but that is kind of what we wanted. We ended at 8 the last time, so we'll start at 8 there, uh, and then go all the way over to a negative 1. Now, depending on what you're given, we might have to switch these. So we do have 8 to 2 given rather than 2 to 8, so um, we'll go ahead and uh, switch that up, or maybe just put in some negatives for these if you want to do it that way. Uh, so 2 to 8 would be the opposite of this 8 to 2. So for that value, we're going to write in this negative 4. 
Oh, so negative four. Uh, from eight to negative one, that is also different than what we had. So we're going to need the opposite there. So negative five. So we're going to say now minus five instead of plus five. And then the last one, negative one to three, that is the same as what we had. So we're just going to add that 11 at the end. So plus 11. Uh, so anywhere where the bounds are switched, use the opposite sign. Uh, if you have the same bounds, you can just use that number straight as it is. Uh, so there we got negative 4, negative 5, and 11, and we'll add those together. And uh, 11 minus 9, that's just going to be 2. So that's it. All right. Uh, so that kind of does it for those integral properties using those. Uh, just real quick, I'm going to mention a couple things up here at the top. Uh, these comparison properties won't spend too much time on those. Uh, so these are, are nice to think about, but we don't really use these a ton uh, as much as we do the other properties. So I'll just go through those real, real, real quick. Uh, so if f of x is bigger than zero uh, between a and b, then the integral has to be bigger than zero. So that's pretty easy to think about for this integral right here. Uh, our function is always bigger than zero. These rectangles are always going to have positive heights. So uh, this integral from a to b is always going to be bigger than zero because these rectangles have positive areas. And then the limit is still going to be positive. Um, so that one kind of makes sense. If we have a function f always bigger than g, then the integral of f is going to be bigger than the integral of g. And Again, for that one, I could probably just draw in like this g function here that's smaller. Um, so integral of f, if it's always bigger than this integral of g, or sorry, if f is always bigger than g, uh, the area under g is going to be smaller. So um, that integral of f is bigger than the integral of g. We get a bigger area uh, for f, smaller area for g. Uh, so that one also kind of makes some sense. Uh, the last one, if I have m and n constants, so that little m is always smaller than f, and big M is always bigger than f. So for this one, I could write in, so constants would be horizontal. So we'll put one, and right here at the bottom, this should always be smaller than or equal to f. Uh, big M, like right here at the top. Uh, so this is always going to be bigger than f right there. So what does this say? This says that integral f of x dx is always bigger than m times b minus a, uh, which would be the area under this small line. All right, so that makes sense. And big m times b minus a, that would be the rectangle right here. So that's that big rectangle. Um, this area under f is going to be smaller than the area of that big rectangle. Uh, so that's all that that last property is saying, is if I have these constant bounds, then the areas under those constants, which are just those rectangular areas, are also going to bound this integral value. Uh, so that's it for the comparison properties. And like I said, most of the time, um, you won't see those in action too much. Uh, it's more, more going to be these using the properties of integrals uh, to kind of rearrange things and use those in a more algebraic way. All right, that'll do it.